Okay, we're going to continue with module 21, and um, here we're going to solve the first word problem of this module. So the word problem reads, a model rocket is launched with an initial upward velocity of 65 miles per second. The rocket's height h in meters after t seconds is given by the following formula. Find all values of t for which the rocket's height is 30 meters. Round your answers to the nearest hundredth. If there is more than one answer, use the OR button. That pertains to Alex. Okay. So this is our formula here. Since they're wanting us to find the where the height is 30 meters, this number here is what's going to become the 30. So we plug in 30 into that formula. And then we'll go ahead and solve this equation. Now this is a quadratic equation because of the t squared um, term. So we need to get all the terms over to one side. Now this is a negative 5t. Usually we like our t squared term to be positive before we factor. So we'll go ahead and move these two terms over to the left instead of moving the 30 to the right. So if I put these terms in order, I get 5t squared minus 65t positive 30 equal to 0. And then as I try to factor this, I can factor out the GCF of 5. Just want to check my math in my head before I do this on paper. And then now we've got to try to factor this, but there are no factors of 6 that will add to give us 13. So the only other way we can solve this is, um, right, if you divide both sides by 5, now you have this equation. And we're going to have to use a quadratic formula. So a is 1, b is negative 13, and c is equal to positive 6. So t equals negative, negative 13 plus or minus the square root of negative 13 squared times 4 times 1 times 6 all over 2 times 1. So we get positive 13 and inside the square root we get uh, 145. Now it does say round your answers to the nearest hundredth so that tells me that they want us to give them a decimal answer. So we're going to do both um, values, 13 plus square root of 145 over two and 13 minus square root of 145 over two. So let's see what we get here. Decimal and rounded to the nearest 10th means I'm going to get 12.5 for this response and now I'm going to try the other and instead of typing in everything I'm just going to change that to a minus and then make sure I tell it to tell me a decimal and oh I forgot to change it to a minus typo there we go and we get 0 0.47 well so the nearest tenth would be 0 0.5. Which makes sense because if this rocket continues in this manner, at some point it's going to reach its maximum and then it's going to come back down. So let's say that the height was here. It would hit the height of 30 meters here, but then it would also hit the height of 30 meters over there. Okay, And so these are the two times. So you would say 12.5 or 0 0.5. Now Alex will count it correct regardless of which order you type in your answers. As long as both answers are entered with the word or in between, you should be okay. Now this is not a word problem anymore, but we're solving an equation that can be written in a quadratic form. So this is a quadratic because you see the square here. Okay, but what is being squared is not the traditional x. Now what they don't want you to do is foil this out, distribute the negative, and combine like terms, turn it into an actual quadratic equation, 
and then solve it from there. What they wanted you to do is note the form, okay? If you have a coefficient and then something squared plus another coefficient and that same thing without the square plus some constant equal to zero, this fits the quadratic form. And that's exactly what I have here, except my y, which is the base of the square, is x plus two. Okay, so instead of writing it like this, if this starts to look confusing, you can write it as y squared minus 10y plus nine. And then I can solve this for y by doing my factoring. And so then I get y equals nine or y equals one. But the original problem did not have y's in it, so it's not satisfactory enough to solve for y. We need to solve for x. So we have to like back substitute, right? What y was to from the beginning. So y actually represented x plus two. And then we can solve for x. So we get two solutions, which are seven and negative one. Now I'm pretty sure I have a couple more examples for the same topic because that value y can look very different from problem to problem, okay? So here we notice that we have this being squared and then this without the square. So the y here is the x squared minus five. So if I substitute that, I end up with y squared plus two y equal to negative one. And that cannot be factored unless it's equal to zero. So we do have to add the one over to the left And now that all of my terms are on the left-hand side, I can factor. And so then I get y plus one squared equals zero. If I take the square root of both sides, I would end up with plus or minus, but there's no such thing when it comes to zero, right? Plus zero and negative zero are the same thing. They're just zero. So we're gonna minus one on both sides and we're gonna get negative one. Again, the problem, the original problem did not have y's in it. They had x's. So we have to go back and plug in what y represents. Now I still have a quadratic, but I don't have all three terms for a quadratic. I just have the square term and then the constants. So you can solve this um, using square root property versus using the factoring method. So if I add five to both sides, I get four, and then if I take the square root on both sides, we will get plus or minus. So we end up with x equal to two, or x equal to negative two. So in Alex, you separate your answers with a comma. Now let's see another version. Here, this is a little bit different because it's not clear your base with the square exponent and then your base without the exponent because both of my two variables seem to have exponents here. However, this is where um, your critical thinking is going to come into play because the question is, can I write this so that I have something squared and then minus five times something without the square and then the plus six? Is it possible, okay? And it is, because if I don't want to have a square out here, that means this entire factor would have to go inside the parentheses. And if I put that in the parentheses here, isn't this expression equivalent to x to the fourth? x squared squared is equivalent to x to the fourth. So in this case, your y is actually x squared. Okay, what's inside this parentheses here? So I can replace all of my x squareds with the y, and I can factor like I did before, and I can solve for y, but then again I have to go back and solve for x, so put back what y represents. And then in order to solve for x, you need to apply the square root, which means you get two answers over there, 
and apply the square root, which means you get two answers on the other equation. This does not simplify, and neither does this. So we have four answers altogether. We have square root of three, negative square root of three, we have square root of two, and we have negative square root of two. There were actually four solutions to this problem, which makes sense because you were solving an x to the fourth power equation to begin with. 